Hey everybody, I'm Gwen. Welcome to At Home with Gigi. Thank you so much for stopping by. Guys, today's video, I'm so excited about it. We're, it's all about farmhouse. I'm going to be sharing with you three farmhouse wooden signs that we've created on a total budget. They are so beautiful. I can't wait for you to see them. And I'm also going to be giving you some more information in just a bit on the subscriber appreciation giveaway. So stay tuned for that. And this video is part of the What Would You Make collaboration. Boy, that was a lot of information I just gave, so we just need to go ahead and get started. Y'all, let's create a very neutral farmhouse sign, and it is so easy to do this. I believe this sign came from Pop Shelf. I've had it in my stash for quite a while, so I really don't remember, but I think it was Pop Shelf. But anyway, we're gonna be using it. It's already distressed, I love that. So it just makes things move along so much faster. And this stencil came from Hobby Lobby, and I'm just lining it up on there as best I can, trying to get it centered, and then I'm gonna tape it down, and then we'll move on to the next step. I'm using the color ink from Waverly Chalk Paint and one of these little sponge daubers. And y'all, I've had a hard time finding these at my local Dollar Tree, so I found them on Amazon. They're actually a much better price. I'll link them down below if you like. But anyway, I'm just going straight up and down, trying not to drag it across the stencil. And I forgot to add Mod Podge to help with the bleeding. And also you can see I'm using my finger and then I will switch in a second to tweezers. For whatever reason, the stencil just kept popping up and down and just shifting. I don't know what was going on. Anyway, I did have a little bit of bleeding and looks a little wobbly in a couple of places, but well, sometimes it is what it is. I just kind of went over it, as you'll see in a minute, with my sanding block and it just kind of blended it in, or at least I hope it did anyway. But um, I'm going to take a little tiny brush, it's actually a makeup brush, and just go over and fill in where the little gaps were left by the stencil and that's strictly optional you don't have to do that but i just think it gives it a much better look i'm just very lightly sanding over the word and the paint i feel that the sign is already distressed enough so i didn't really want to distress that even more just wiped off any residue and then i'm just going to attach some ribbon on one end with some hot glue and i think this black and white ribbon came from walmart Y'all, everything that I've used for this project, I had on hand already. I'm just shopping my stash. Isn't that the best way to do a project? You already have everything on hand. But anyway, I'm just popping it on with some hot glue. And then on top of that, I'll add this lace from the Dollar Tree. I've taped together the ends of three pieces of twine just to make it go through these little small beads a lot easier. And these are beads left over from other projects. And once I have them in place, I'm going to tie a knot at the very bottom of the brown bead just to hold the beads in place. And once I have that knot, you know, pretty tight, I'm going to pull on it gently where it will kind of pop back inside that bottom bead. And it will just help hold everything in place. And for a little added security, I'm just going to add just a tiny, tiny bit, like a drop of super glue. And again, that will hold everything in place and keep the beads from sliding down. I'm going to fray the ends of the twine just a little bit with this little pointy tool from the Dollar Tree. And because it's a little too long, I'm going to trim that up as even as I can and then use just a little bit of hot glue and attach it to the back of the sign. For a little extra security and to cover everything up, I've added a little piece of ribbon over the back of the twine and the beads kept swinging around and so I'm adding a little drop of hot glue to the very top of the sign and just kind of tapping it into place. You don't want to smash it down because if you do, you're going to smear that hot glue everywhere and you'll be able to see it. And then add just a tiny bit more right behind that white bead and it just holds everything in place. I think this turned out just so darling, but y'all going to have to tell me what your thoughts are. As I mentioned earlier, this video is part of the What Would You Make collaboration. Our host is 
Brenda at Rustic and Lace DIY, Christine at DIY Craftaholic, and Sandra at the Shrowin's Nest. Guys, I'll have everybody's channel and the playlist down in that description box. Please make sure you go check them out and say hello if you're from my channel. If you're here from the playlist, hi, welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you for stopping by. For this DIY, we're going to be using this amazing wood round that I found at Family Dollar, believe it or not, and some antiquing wax from Folk Art. So I mixed some water with it, and I really should have mixed more water. As you can see, it's coming out very, very dark, and I'm using a sponge instead of the baby wipe to apply it. I do use the baby wipe to go back and just wipe it back and try to lighten it up a little bit. Didn't exactly work, but you'll see at the end it comes out really well. I think it turns out beautiful, but you'll have to tell me what you think. going to be using the color white from Waverly Chalk Pink to paint the word hello and I do end up giving this two coats because I really want this to pop. Now if you want a more rustic vintagey look you can just do one coat. This DIY was originally made about two years ago when I first started my YouTube channel and as most people know your editing skills and whatever is not the greatest in the world so I revamped this cut it down and I just love this so much. I wanted to share it with you again. And y'all, I still use this wood round on my front door. It has really held up. I have gone back each year at, to a Family Dollar looking to see if they have more of these signs. And so far, they have not. I'm using the color ink from Waverly Chalk Pink. Now, I'm keeping my project very neutral for colors. But this would be absolutely gorgeous and just bright, vibrant colors for summer. Y'all, I'm kicking myself for not getting a second sign. I don't know why I didn't pick up a second one, or a third, or a fourth. We're going to be adding some of this nautical rope to the sign and this came from Dollar Tree of course and as you can see I've already taped off the end right there and that just keeps your rope from fraying. It's a little trick I've always liked to use and also as I'm going around the sign I'm kind of twisting the rope just a little bit because I want to kind of keep it uniform. But in other words I don't want it to be kind of skinny in one section and kind of flared out in another. You'll see what I mean as I'm going around the sign. Before I cut the rope, I did wrap it with more tape and you see it just fits so perfectly, no fraying, but that's all gonna be covered up anyway with some greenery so you won't even see the tape. And this greenery came from Walmart. I love this, it's so pretty. I'm just bending it a little bit in the center. I wrapped it with some twine and then I'm just going to attach this bow and this beautiful ribbon came from Amazon. It's just so pretty, I love it. As I mentioned earlier, I made this two years ago. As a matter of fact, I just pulled it out recently to put it on my door for this year, and I am absolutely in love with it still. Let's create a fun and easy DIY using this cutting board from Walmart's Dollar Spot. And y'all, I really like this. I paid $5 for it. We're just gonna flip it over. We're gonna paint the back side with two coats of Waverly chalk paint in white. And then once it's dry, I'm gonna go in with my sanding block and then just distress it some around the edges. We're gonna add this rooster to our cutting board and this came from Walmart, y'all. I don't remember how much I paid for it. I've had it for forever, but it's back in their crafting section. So I think it was maybe $1.25, $1.50, something like that. Anyway, I'm just gonna paint most of the rooster in the color truffle but it's wing and what is that? It's tail feathers, something like that. We're gonna paint those white because we're gonna be decoupaging those.
coming in with a layer of Mod Podge for both the tail feathers and the wing. Once that's dry, we're going to add our napkin. This napkin came from Hobby Lobby. I picked the, a package of them up for a couple of years ago back in their party section. I think they still have some, might not be exactly like but similar. But anyway, I've cut down a piece to the size that I need and then I'm just using the heat method which reactivates that Mod Podge and causes the napkin to adhere to your surface. This is one of my all-time favorite ways to decoupage. I absolutely love it. It gives it such a perfect finish. If you watch my videos, y'all know this. I absolutely love it. Then I'm just going to use a nail file. And I'm going to tell y'all, this was a little bit tedious. And usually I tell you to sand down or away from your project. But because of the location of where I'm trying to sand away the excess napkin, it, you actually had to kind of go back and forth or sideways, almost like you're filing your nail. But I, this is very sped up, so I just did it very, very gently and just very slowly and just went back and forth between the larger nail file and the smaller one. And again, it's kind of tedious, but it was so worth it. I think my rooster turns out absolutely beautiful. We're just going to make a quick, easy little bow for the top of the cutting board. And both of the ribbon came from the Dollar Tree. And this that I'm working with now, y'all, the fallout is real. You can see a little bit of the black there on the table, but it's a pretty ribbon. But just be aware that the black that falls out, it's very real and it gets all over everything. I want to take a second and say thank y'all so much to all my new subscribers and my returning subscribers, all your wonderful, lovely comments, and a reminder about my subscriber appreciation giveaway it's two amazon gift cards for fifty dollars each how do you enter be a subscriber and between now and june the second i will have a question for you to answer on june the 8th i'll do the drawing for two winners june the 9th i'll announce it on my community tab on youtube and on instagram so just make sure you hit that notification bell so you'll know when i have a video going up and you can listen for that question and i cannot wait to give those away and just to say a great big thank you for just all your support. I don't want the rooster to lay flat against the cutting board so I'm using one of these little cubes from the Dollar Tree and I'm using a combination of Gorilla Gel glue and hot glue and as you can see my little squares on the back of the rooster just to know where I want to attach it kind of hold it in place till it sets up then I'll use the same combination to attach it to the cutting board. Now that I've added the rooster, I'm going to go ahead and add the bow and just using a little bit of hot glue, going to pop it onto the top of the cutting board. And I just kept feeling like it was missing something. I couldn't figure out what it was, so I just let it set overnight. The next day, and I'm like, oh, I need some greenery. So I'm using this greenery. It came from Michael's, and I got it back in the spring when they had their 70% off sale that I picked up some items. And I'm just snipping off some little pieces and just popping them in there. Now. I didn't cut them down. I will go back later off camera and snip them down because they were just way too long and just looked kind of weird sticking out there. And as you can see, I popped in some three little beads. And y'all, I always make extra beads when I'm painting beads for a project. And perfect example, I thought it needed just a little bit of something else. Put them on some twine and then just used my little tool and hot glued it right up under the edge of the bow and I think it was just the perfect addition but y'all gotta tell me what you think and what do you think about the leopard print on my rooster's uh, tail feathers and his wing I love it it's different it's unique and I am really enjoying this Thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your day to watch my video. I truly appreciate you. If you're not subscribed, I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button. It's an absolutely free way to help my channel grow, and it means so much to me. Don't forget about the playlist down in the description box. Thank you, Brenda, Christine, and Sandra for hosting this collaboration, and guys, I will see y'all soon.